Okay, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy. Hallelujah, you're worthy. Hallelujah, you're worthy. Hallelujah, you're worthy. I lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. I bow my head. Yes. I lift, I lift my hands, I praise you, I, I reverence you, Lord, I bow my head, oh yes, I honor you. hallelujah, you're worthy, hallelujah, you're worthy, we give you the highest praise, you're worthy, Hallelujah, you're worthy. I lift my hands. We praise you, Lord. We bow our heads. Oh, yes, we. I lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. I bow my head. Oh, yes. Hallelujah, you're worthy. Hallelujah, you're worthy. Hallelujah, you're worthy. Hallelujah, you're worthy to be praised. Oh, yes, hallelujah. You're worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. You deserve all the praise and the honor. Hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. you up, Lord God. Hallelujah. You deserve the highest praise. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. You're worthy. Oh, yes, you are. Hallelujah. We dance before you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. You deserve the highest praise. Lord, we lift you up. Lord, we lift you up. You deserve all the praise and the honor. Lord, we lift you up. Lord, we lift you up. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Father, we lift you up. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. Lord, this is your day. This is the day that you've made. We are rejoicing and we're glad in it. So, Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that that word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Oh, Lord, I thank you that we take your word, we hide it in our heart, and we do not sin against you. I thank you, Lord, that the word produces in our lives. In Jesus' name, ears to hear, heart to understand, this night, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As promised... Divine health, this is uh, number two, divine health two. Thank you, ma'am. Let me give you the definition for divine. Remember, it's all about God when it's divine. It's of God, your health is of God, relating to God, coming from God. Uh, and of course, uh, we're going to make this confession, all three of them. I know uh, uh, your faith is coming up to it. I'll never be sick another day in my life. Two more times. Last one. Amen. I agree with you. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26 and 27. Now, our health is a part of the benefit package. Salvation, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you accepted him into your heart and into your life, salvation includes healing and health. It's in there. But what happens is we have a lot of user errors. And with those user errors, we don't treat our bodies the way they're supposed to be treated. Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 27 it says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in whose image? His image. We were created in his image. In the likeness of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. Say this, I am built to last. I am built to last. Say it again for me. I am I built, built to last. last. You were created in his image and in his likeness. So that means that you were built to last. You wasn't a temporary, uh, just, just uh, as, as, as Darwin uh, says that it's a big bang theory, you were just showed up. No. God took his time. He formed. He created you. And so as a result, now we're going to learn. I thank God for apostle because God put it in his heart. I don't know about you, but I don't. I, I'm trying to think how many in my lifetime, how many pastors actually taught on health from from here. Uh, and and I, I, you might know more than I do. He's my he's the first one. You know, we talked about everything. There was all kind of ministry, but nothing about health, nothing about eating correctly. Not from not from the man of God. You know, you can always go to those other things. Uh, there was a lot of multi-level marketing health projects, vitamins and stuff of that nature, but never from from where it's supposed to be. God created you and intended for you to live a long life. In fact, he had a life a lifespan. It's in the Bible. Uh, go with me to Psalms 90. Psalms 90. 
Verse 10, 90 and 10. He has a, 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 lifespan, a lifespan set. It's in the word. Psalms 90 and verse 10 says, the days of our years are three score. A score is 20. So if it's three scores, how many years is that? 60. Yeah, yeah, three scores. 60 years and 60 plus 10 is 70. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years, which is 80. Yet is their strength labor? Now, go with me to Genesis 6 and 3. So now you have the low end, 70. But you know what's happening? A lot of people not even hitting the low end. They're not even getting to 70. Our bodies are so fearful and wonderfully made, we could abuse it for years, and it never shows up until later on, 30, 40, 50 years. I know people, uh, how many of you know that smoking can cause cancer? I didn't make it up. Read the pack. I know people that smoked for 75 years, 75 years smoker, you know, they, you know, at the end of that, but they, they still made this, I mean, they still made it five years above the minimum. So your body is fearfully and wonderfully made. It's designed to heal itself. You cut yourself, blood will come thick and the, the skin will close up around it. And before you know it, it's all better. So God has a plan for you. Genesis 6 and 3, look at what else it says. It says, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. So he gives us a span from 70 to 120. That is scripture. So now it's up to us. What are you going for? And I do believe that uh, you can always say, you know what, Lord, I'm not ready to leave at, at 120. Uh, I, I, I still want to hang around a little while. There was a king. His name is Hezekiah. Uh, the prophet Isaiah came to Hezekiah. Hezekiah was, was, was sick. He was in bed, had been in bed. And so God sent, sent, uh, uh, sent, sent Isaiah to Hezekiah. He said, look, uh, get your house in order. Uh, the Lord says, you, you, you're not going to make it. You're going to die. And so Isaiah turns around and he walks out and he goes about his business. Well, he didn't know that Hezekiah turned and he, and he started talking to the Lord. He said, Lord, I've been faithful. I, I, I've done what you told me to do. And then the Lord told Isaiah, say, go back, tell him I'm going to give him 15 more years. And so he goes back in and look, the Lord said, you're going to give me 15 more years. Do this, that, and the other. So, yes, he is gracious and merciful. You understand? And then on the other side, you know, after you get to 120, you might say, you know what, Lord? I'm ready to come home. <laughs> I'm ready. But the point is, we've been trained and taught all of our life. You never know when you're going to go. You could die tomorrow. You could die today. And so as a result, we have that mentality. And sometimes we eat like it might be tomorrow. And we abuse ourselves like we don't. No. If you do what the scripture prescribed for you to do, you can have that 70 to 120. Come on, let's get back into the word. Let's get back into the word. Uh, go with me to Psalms 91. Psalms 91 is, 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 uh, is the psalm that I confess over a life construction church. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a part of my... I don't want to say routine, but it's a part of my prayer. Psalms 91. Uh, let's go ahead and just get it all. Let's get it all. 16, 91 and 16 where I actually need to be. But since I'm there, let's just go ahead and get it all. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyed by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that waits at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy, at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it will not come nigh thee. Only with our eyes.
shall thy behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, befall thee, neither can any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For the Lord, uh, uh, verse 11, for the Lord shall or has, when I confess over you, I say, the Lord has given his angels charge over thee to keep thee in how many of your ways? All your ways. There's angels watching over you at all times. There are things that you see that you're delivered from and the things that you don't see that you're delivered from. Come on, next verse. They shall bear thee up in their hands, least thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. <clears throat> because thou hast set his love upon us. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he had known my name. He shall call upon me. And what's going to happen? I will answer him. Now, the hymn that he's talking about is the one from verse 1 that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. If you're not dwelling in the secret place of the Most High and you're just doing your thing, it's not you, but I'm praying it over you. I will be, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Verse 16 is where we are. With long life will I do what? Satisfy him and show him my salvation. Part of it is a long, satisfied life. Say long, satisfied life. Go back to the verse before that. I need to, I need, I, you need to understand what it means to be delivered. Uh, because sometimes when we, when we say delivered, you think that you've been moved from one situation and placed in another situation. Uh, that's the way that I thought until uh, it was revealed to me that it's not the case. Because deliverance does not mean for you to be transported or transformed from one to another spot. Because, let me show you what deliverance is. Uh, anybody ever heard of the uh, Daniel in the lion's den? You heard of that before? Daniel was cast into a lion's den. Now, Daniel was delivered from the lions. How was he delivered from the lions? Was he, was he taken out of the lion's den? No, he spent the night with the lions. See, your deliverance is... I'm going to be with you in whatever it is that you're doing, and we're going to walk out of this thing together. You're not going to run from it. You don't have to. You're not, you're not going to run from it. You don't have to. Three Hebrew boys, they were cast in the fiery furnace. He was there with them. So no matter what you, you need to get that out of your mind that God is going to move me from this situation. That, no, no, no. God's going to be with me, and we're going to walk out this thing with our hell, head held high. Giving God all the glory, but we're so used to running from stuff. So when we think delivered, I'm, I'm out of here. Whew. Whew. I got out of that. No, no, God said, I'm going to be with you, and we're going to walk through this thing together. Say process. process. See, deliverance is a process. See, you learn something when you're delivered from something. You're supposed to learn something whenever you get yourself in the tizzy. Most of the time it's on you, but when you're supposed to learn something. Whenever you go through a situation or circumstance, you, you should put the file that thing. Oh, well, this looks just like I just look just like this. I've seen this movie before. I already know the ending. So you know what? I'm going to do something different. But so often people do the exact same thing. And they see and they said, you know, I keep getting myself in the same problem. I keep get, I find myself in the same. That's because you're doing the same thing. Do something different. Tell me what I said. Oh, let me pray. I need to pray for Cameron Jordan, and I need to thank God for, uh, for, for Carolyn, uh, for Ken and Carolyn Hale. Uh, there was a bridge that was struck uh, in their area not far from where they live, and they traveled that bridge, bridge all the time, and they're still looking for people because the bridge collapsed. So, Father, we thank you, and I thank you for, for, for Cam. I thank you, Lord, for supernatural healing his body. I thank you, Lord, that all is well. And he comes through. He recovers speedily in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for protecting and keeping Ken and Carolyn Hale safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's get back to where we were. I came up, so I had to go ahead and take care of that. So here, deliverance. You got the picture now. God is going to walk me through this situation. Stop trying to run from stuff. Stand up there 
Face whatever you got to face and walk through it. Walk through it. Come on, 16, 16, 16. We're talking about your divine health. Verse 16, that's where we need to be. In verse 16, he said, look, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That means he wants you to be here a long time, a long now. He said, with long life will I satisfy him. Inside there, because there are people that live a long time, but their health is not really satisfying. They, you know, they, uh, I don't know where they got this from, but people say that uh, they live that long time un under the weather, whatever that means. Uh, and, and so God wants you to be strong. Caleb. Caleb was one of the spies that went into the land. And uh, when he went there, it was 12 of them that went in. And when they went in, they went in to scout it out, say, look, yeah, we got this. We got this. We're going to come in and we're going we gonna to evict those people. And we're going to take this land because this is the land that God has given us. Well, he and Joshua came back and they said the same thing. However, 10 of them came and they said, nah, bro, you ain't saw those dudes. Those dudes are giants in the land. We can't beat them. We be not able. And so at, he, he, was at, he was 40 years old then. And so God said, look, all right, since, since y'all say y'all can't get it, all right, y'all going to wander around. Forty years they wandered around. And so finally, here we are 45 years later. Forty-five years later. Caleb is now 85. They finally get to the place where, okay, this is the land. Let's go get it. And uh, Joshua said, look, uh, what, what you want, Caleb? I want that one over there. Now, the one that he wanted was where all the giants live. It was the most fortified place there. And at 85, he went, took it, evicted those food in body bags. So at 85, he went ahead. To, so that's what, uh, when I'm talking about long, satisfied life, I, I don't want you, somebody to be pushing you in a wheelchair. I don't want that. I don't want, you know, you have, you have to wear those, you know, those <laughs> grown-up diapers, none of that. I want you to be healthy. That's what God intended. Long, satisfied life. Not just barely making it. Uh, I'm 70, but man, I feel 90. No, none of that. He wants you to be strong and healthy. Tell me what I said. Do you agree with him, though? Thank you. Thank you. That's the most important thing. Now, go with me to uh, 1 Corinthians. We're going to read, uh, I got three verses in Corinthians, all of them 1 Corinthians. The first one is 3.16. Then after that, 619. Then after that, 927. But we'll take one at a time, 316. 1 Corinthians 316. Your body is important. You can't live here. You're going to have to check. If your body is not intact, the reason why you're a legal citizen on planet Earth is because of you have a body. This body allows you to live here. Once the body is gone, then you have to check. You're no longer a legal citizen of the planet. So if you want to live it, you got to take care of that body. Now, let me tell you a, a caveat to that, something else in addition to that. 16 says, know ye not that ye are the what? Temple, Temple of who? God. You are carrying God Almighty in your body. He can't go anywhere without a body. You have him in your body. So look, your body is the temple of God. And the spirit of God, where? Dwells where? In you. You are a carrier of God in the Holy Spirit. Carry everywhere you go, you got to take care of that body. 16, I think it's 619, I'm sorry. 619. 619 and then 927. Hallelujah. Bryson, make sure I have my clock next week, all right? I can count on you, sir. I can count on you. It says what? What did it say? What do he say? That your body is a what? Temple of the Holy Ghost, which is where? In you, which you have a who? God. And ye are not your own. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to him. You have an assignment to carry him around. He can do what he needs to do only through you. If there's not a you, well, then he has to wait for a me. Because if you don't take care of your business, he's going to find me, and I'll take care of it for him. In the book of Acts, Philip, my God, just conducted a massive revival. 
people were delivered, healed, set free. That night he was sleeping, resting because all of the things that God had used him to do. And then there's another guy in a desert going all the way back home to Ethiopia. And so on his way back there, he's reading. He came to Jerusalem, didn't get the answers that he needed. And God woke him up. Philip said, look, I need you to go to the desert and I need you to meet a man. Well, God, don't you have somebody else that could take care of the job? I mean, surely I'm not the only person. So why in the world you got to wake me up? to go all the way to the desert to talk to this guy about, he, he didn't say none of that. Okay, let's go. See, God loves his people so much to where if you give a, uh, if you if, if you if like you want something from him, if you if like you want him, he's going to do whatever he has to do to make certain that you get it. The information I'm giving you now, you ifed. So as a result, he's going to let you know, all right, take care of that body. Take care of that body. As a young man, nobody told me this. Nobody told me to take care of my body. Then, you know, they did tell me other things to do with my body, you know, like sow those wild oats while you can. I don't know what wild oats are, but you know what it is. <laughs> and so as a result, now I'm telling you, take care of that body. Take care of that body because at some point you're going to be 60 years old. And you want to be able to move around and be healthy. Man, everybody in here knows somebody that is not quite 60, and they're not moving well, and they're not flowing. Take care of your body. Tell me what I said. 927, 927. Lord, I love you. Thank you for body taking care of people. 927 says, give me 26. Let me get it both away. Because in, the context is sin. That's the context. You know, take care of your body, stay away from fornication and stuff. The context is that, but it still applies. It says, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my what? Body. I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection. I control that thing. I run this show, not my body. Now, there is a fight all the time. Your, your spirit is telling your body and your soul and mind ganging up on your spirit. Hey, let's eat this. Now, just for the sake of teaching, I went ahead and I sat down and I Googled the worst foods that you could ever eat. Now, I'm not going to talk about you. I'm going to talk about me. I found myself on the list. I found myself on the list. And so I had to make some, I had to make some changes. Uh, donuts. Don't raise your hands. I know somebody here like donuts. Now, in the city of Petal, there is a breakfast sandwich. Bacon, egg, cheese, wrapped in a donut bun. Some of y'all like that? What y'all looking at me like that for? <laughs> wrapped in a donut bun. A donut bun. Now, just one donut is 200 calories, 12 grams of fat. Just one. I used to eat six straight. Straight. Half a dozen. Straight. All right. Let me go ahead and do it. Hi, I'm Bernard Jackson. I'm a recovering sugar addict. <laughs> Y'all supposed to say, hi, Bernard. <laughs> Worst things in my body. My body. Now, I, I shut it down. It's been probably 25. Let me see. I'm 60. I'll be 62. So probably about 30 years, maybe 25, something like that, since I've messed with any donuts or anything like that. I shut those things down uh, because uh, I, I'm not allowed to eat sugar. I, I'm just not. It just, it, it, bring, it opens the door for me to other things. Uh, you know, once I, once I get that sugar, uh, oh, the other thing was on the lip was chips. Ooh. They say you can't have just one of Lay's, but you know what? Any flavor chips, <laughs> it don't matter. And so chips was on there. 
Uh, if you just eat three, three ounces of chips just once a week, in one year, that is tw over 23,000 calories. That is seven pounds to your waistline. Now, three ounces of chips, that is those little bitty bags that they sell for 50 cent in Walmart. Those little bitty bags. And surely, you don't get those little bitty bags. <laughs> you get, the, you get the, six, the six ounce bags. You get the big ones. Chips was on the list. I'm talking about me. Now, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What does it say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, Bernard Jackson, stop eating them doggone chips. Bernard Jackson, Lido Donuts alone. Does all, is all things included in there? So all things that I can control my appetite. Not that, many, not, people, not, not that many people believe that, but yes, it can be controlled. And it can go out of control. Uh, I, I heard story. Now, there are some people with a high level of discipline. High level. I mean, uh, uh, apostle, high level of discipline. He could just shut it down. That's it, boys. And then he's done with that. I, I don't possess that high level of discipline yet. Because, you know... <laughs> They're, once I get started, uh, I, I, I believe in finishing. Say finish. finish. I believe in finishing. I was taught by my mom, if it's on your plate, you finish your food. So if I get a bag of chips, I'm not finished until there's none, none in the bag. I believe in finishing. <laughs> and so as a result, it, it's, I just stay away from it. I don't put myself in position that I'm not going to win. I'm just I'm not going to win that. So uh, I don't... I don't I keep those chips out. And then I am the head of my household. I'm, I'm it. Uh, let me tell you, cookies. It's on the list. Yes, I know. I know. Oh, man. It's on the list. Oatmeal cookies. Yeah. I'm talking. Man, that was my thing. I like chewy gooey. And so that, but then I graduated to just, you know what? I, to, I can't mess with the chewy gooey. So I get those other ones. <laughs> That's not chewy gooey. But it still have, it, I, you have to get to the place to where, you know what? Lord, this ain't good for me. This ain't good for me. Uh, and, and so this is the only body that I'm going to have. I'm not going to have another one. Uh, I made changes in my 30s so that I can do well in my 60s. Uh, i not as competitive as I once was, but I, was, I saw myself saying, look, you know what? I got to be able to beat my sons at least until they're 16 or 15, you know, basketball. And so when the grandchildren came, I, I got to be able to beat them 15 or 16. And so after that, I said, you know what? I need to be able to play with my, my grandchildren <laughs> about 15 or 16. And so that's all I, I need to be. I need to be active. Now, we're going to get into six things. Uh, if I had my clock, I'd see how much, how much more time I got. But thank God for Bryson. I will have my clock next week. Glory to God. Romans chapter 7, 20, 23 to 25. Romans chapter 7, 23 to 25. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this, of this death? I thank God. Tell me what I said. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with my mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with my body, with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. So I have to bring this body in control. Man. I know a young man, he grew up eating nothing but good, healthy stuff. Good, healthy stuff. I mean, his mom would juice his vegetables. And, I mean, just, just that, that was it. 
One day, one day, one taste of chicken changed his life. I mean, my goodness, it was like chicken, chicken, chicken. Before that, it was milk. Now, chicken, chicken. So it's very important for us to understand, look, you know what you like, what you don't like. You know what you're supposed to have, what you're not supposed to have. Stay away from the things you're not supposed to have and run to the things that you are supposed to have. Because I want you healthy. I want you healthy. I, I, I thank God that I had to, you know, go to visit too many members in the hospital or anything like that. I want you healthy. Bless the Lord. Man, I want you healthy. I want you healthy. So Bernard Jackson, no more donuts, no more chips for you. Uh, and uh, uh, let me see. Go to Proverbs 25, 28. Say self-control. 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 Proverbs 25, 28. It says, he that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. If you have no self-control, you're out of control, and you're in trouble. Now, you have to understand what he meant. This is a military statement. They protected the city with the walls, just like you protect your city, uh, you know, with the door locks, the dead boats, and all those things. But he said, if you have no self-control, you're leaving the doors wide open, wide open for sickness and disease to walk right in there. Oh, I didn't know somebody lived here? And they just walk right in. So you have to maintain self-control. Uh, Psalms 139, verse 14. 139, verse 14. At the count of three, read it for me, please. One, two, three. You are a wonder. You have 206 bones in your body. You carry around at least, let me see, from 1.2 gallons of blood to 1.5 gallons of blood. You have a super highway that carries that blood all over. You have veins, you have arteries, all that going on all the time. And you're just sitting and doing nothing with it. When I say nothing with it, the body is just doing that on its own. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to, okay, I need to breathe now. Okay, wait a second, wait a second. I can't talk that. Heart, pump blood now. None of those things. It, 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 it just, it's, it's on autopilot. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. If I turn these lights off, your eyes will begin to find the little bit light that's left, and you will be able to see. Just like that, if the lights go out, you're, you know, you won't be able to see anything, but then just give it a little, and then the eyes will start to find light for you. You are fearful and wonderfully made. Like I said before, I abused my body the first 30, 35 years of my life. Just abused it flat out, just did anything I wanted, and then we started to learn a little bit about health on our own. Well, you know, I had a help. I, lit, I had some help from my body, too, was telling me. Because see, your body will let you know. I, I know people, through the modern medicine, they, they help us. You know, I don't want, you know, medicine uh, is designed to help you. But there are medicines that your body said, look, you can't eat this. If you eat this, I'm not going to work right. And so you have, though. And then through the miracle of modern medicine, oh, wait a minute. If I eat, if I take this medicine, then I could eat this. You know what? Give me this. Give me this. And so they take the medicine so they can eat with their body telling them, this ain't good for you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you a secret. Your taste buds are killing you. Your taste buds are killing you. I mean, think about the things that people eat. Pig lips, pig feet, pig tail, pig intestines. I mean, it just don't sound right, right? But I know y'all eat them pig lips. I know you eat them pig tails. I know you love that bacon, though. <laughs> You 
Yeah, I was on the list too. I used to love me some bacon. <laughs> I was on the list. It, it's important for you to understand that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your body is, is, is a work of God's. It, he calls it, it's marvelous. Marvelous. You are a marvelous work of God. Tell me what I said. That you are. That you are. Good health is your birthright. Good health is your birthright. Tell me what I said. Now, with that good health, you also have a responsibility. Uh, there are laws that govern our, our society, our environment, uh, nature, laws. Uh, there's the law of gravity, for instance. Uh, if, you know, what goes up must come down. You stand up on a building that's seven stories high, you jump off, it, off of it, do not believe R. Kelly when he tells you, I believe I can fly. <laughs> Don't believe him. If you jump off seven stories, and you, you will not fly. You will not fly. You will plummet. Now, does that mean that, uh, that gravity was the reason why that person fell? No. That person fell because he ignored the law. As long as you flow with the law, the law will flow with you. As long as you take care of your body, your body will work for you. It will, it, you will be there. It will function for you. It will work. You won't get all those pains and aches and things of that nature. I know young people. I know people way younger than me, and uh, they, they, their bodies are letting them know, man, what is life going to be like when I get his age if I'm hurting right now? Make the changes now. If you don't make the changes now, you're going to pay for it later. Tell me what I said. I know you don't like it, but say it anyway. Make the changes, now. Make the changes when? Now. Make the changes now. You know the biggest fool? The biggest fool is the fool that fools himself. Oh, I can do anything that I want to do. Uh, no, that's going to catch up with you. Yeah, that's going to catch up with you. Let me give you six things that your body absolutely has to have. Of course, food. What's the first one? Yeah, yeah. Let me add it. What about the right kinds of food? Can I say that one? Right kinds of food. Second thing is air. Of course, you have to breathe. Water, you got to drink it. Not those substitutes. When you get thirsty, you drink water. Tell me what I said. That's what he said, but that ain't what I'm going to do. You've been duped. You've been fooled. That when you're thirsty, you need a Coke, you need a Gatorade, you need all of the, you need water. Your body is asking you for water. Now, you're going to drink those things. Those things have a base product of water, but they have so many other things inside of what you're drinking. Let's just drink the real thing, just water. All these things are just the word. You do whatever you want. I don't want you to get this. You know what? If I go to that church, I can't even drink soda. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I just, uh, I'm, just, I'm just giving you. I believe that if you know right from wrong and you put the choice in yours, it's better than not knowing. All right? That, that, that's what it's, it, it's here. I want you to know. Now, you do it whatever you want to do. You can still come here to church eating whatever you eat, doing whatever you want to do. It's my job to give you the word. All right? So you got your food, you got air, you got water, rest. Tell me what I said. Rest. rest. Oh, get this one. Sunshine. Sunshine. You know, get out of the house. Now, let's partner sunshine with exercise. <clears throat> like I said before, your body is so fearful and wonderfully made, your exercise can be, it don't have to be an hour straight. It can just add all the stuff that you do, all the activities that you do for, for a day. You know, I, you know, we got some people in here that, that work with children, and that's your exercise every day. You don't have to do that job and then do it again. Your body remembers and records all of the things, all your movements. You know, the picking up the children, the walking them out, walking. It records all those things. Boy, I know y'all glad, huh? 
Because <laughs> once you get done, you're not trying to go to nobody's gym. You're not trying to do none of those things. It remembers all, it accumulates. Your body is so, you don't have to get out there after you're done. It remembers all those things. Now, remember, you're, the exercise is the thing that takes care of your digestive system, you know, to get rid of the waste part of it. You know, because if you're drinking all that stuff that you're not supposed to drink, well, then your body has to separate. All right, I need to extract the water out of this stuff and throw away all of this stuff right here. Or you eating stuff that I need to extract the nutrients out of this and throw away all of this. Now, if you are not getting exercise, if you're not moving, then things on the inside ain't moving. And you have a house. At your house, just imagine, if you don't take the trash out for a week, you don't take the trash out for, for two days, you, it, it runs over. That's what it's like. If you're not going to the restroom and getting rid of the trash, it's on the inside. And uh, let me see what they say. Uh, it is toxifying. I better keep going. I better keep going. So you have those six things right there. Uh, in addition, in addition, your environment plays another part in your health, in your divine health. As a young man, early in my marriage, we uh, got to have peace in my house. Got to have peace. Got to be surrounded with love. When you get love and peace in your household, that makes everything so much better. And it's, I, I can't, I mean, I, I, I've been in a house where there was no love, no peace, a lot of chaos and stuff like that. And so, uh, like my book, which many of you got and many of you read, uh, in, in the book, I learned from others' mistakes. I, I saw their mistakes, and as a result, I didn't duplicate those. Most people, you know, they see the mistake, and then they do the same thing. I saw those things. And so, I, look, we're not going to be hollering and screaming at one another. We're not going to be yelling at none of those things. We're going to talk like grown folk, and we're going to communicate. And that's the way that we're going to. Living in an environment of love is the greatest, the greatest thing ever. Greatest thing ever. Now, there are several people that know me on a personal level, and they could, they could tell you, you know, because, uh, you know, like, we had a member. She moved away. Uh, she, she said, because we used to go over there and, and talk with her, and she said, uh, I already know y'all not putting on just for us. Y'all live like this. And so that's the greatest compliment ever. Uh, my children in the house, they, they, they lived with me. They, they saw I'm the same guy, you know, like Coach Boone. I'm the same Mean dude, <laughs> it's time for me to discipline you. There is here, but it's all loving. I love God at home. I love God abroad. Same God, and so that is the last piece to you walking in this divine help. I mean, and I, this is not an excuse. Don't don't you dare say I'm giving an excuse. When your environment is all jacked up, sometimes you need a couple drinks. <laughs> now I'm in trouble again. <laughs> Look, you want a peaceful environment because you go to work, it's chaos out there. But man, when you come home, it should be peace. Oh, man. Like Al Green said, love and what else? Y'all know the song. Y'all know the song. <laughs> Love and happiness. I mean, that's the last part. That's the last ingredient of divine health. So you ain't got no time for all that bickering and strife and all of those things. My goodness. Man. Now, the statute of limitations are over, so I can't go to jail. But if my children didn't get along, they got Mr. Mr. Belt, Mr. Discipline. You can... I don't care what the, what the argument is about. Come here. Come here. And, you know, they, they mocked me, but it was always, they already knew I'm in trouble. And, and it was start. Because 
It is too important to your psyche, your mental well-being. I don't know. Maybe y'all like living in chaos. Uh uh-uh, uh, not me. All that fussing and all that arguing. And, and they don't, they, you know, all that cussing and all that stuff. No. no. No, I need peace. And I am prepared to do whatever I have to do to get some peace in my house. Peace by any means necessary. <laughs> Hallelujah. You like that? <laughs> now, you take those six things. The seventh thing is, is peace. And your energy level is going to be up. Now, everything works on energy. You ain't got, if you ain't got no energy, you're not functioning. So it's important for you to h- operate at a high level of energy. Thank God for, for, uh, for the ladies that, that, that man, they, they do a fine job at LCLA. Uh, but their energy level. Now, you know, there, there's some people that we, uh, let me see, uh, some people we suggest, hey, look, you need a V8. <laughs> you need a V8, a V8, so we can help you get some energy up in here. Because if you don't have it, them children will eat you alive. Eat you alive. So thank God for you. Low energy, low life. High energy, high life. So let me say it again. High energy, high life. Low energy, low life. Get that energy. Life is good. Life is good. Man. Now, when you walk in these things here, because, look, you will have life situations. You're going to have them. They're going to come. Uh, everybody's not going to do what, what they're supposed to do. Uh, they're going to do things that say, you're going to have life situations. But when you are functioning in these things, that walking in divine health, those life situations will not knock you down. They won't. It'll, you know, kind of stumble you, but but you'll be able to rebound and get back in it. Father, I thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Thank you, Lord, for my clock that Bryson put up already. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that we heard your word, and because we heard your word, we apply your word. Divine health is our birthright. So I thank you, Lord, for the necessary skills, the necessary knowledge that we need in order to function the way that you would have us to function. Body, you hear this. You will not rule us. We rule you. You're going to do what we say do in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for wisdom. I thank you, Lord, for self-control. Holy Spirit, you're my helper, my comfort, and my God. You remind me. In Jesus' name, angels, angels, you're there to uphold me, help me. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you're watching today and and you're not certain in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible said that if you believe with your heart, confess with your mouth, that God had raised Jesus Christ from the dead, then God would save you. I want to pray with you. Say this with me. Say, dear God, I believe with my heart. I say with my mouth that you raised Jesus from the dead. And according to your word, salvation belongs to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the next thing I want you to do is text LCC to 866-891-0606. Text LCC to 866-891-0606. When, it, when you do that, it's going to give you a link. Click on that link, and that link is going to give you the word that's going to tell you what just happened in Jesus' name. So make certain that you do that. And also... It's going to put you in our data bank. Anytime we have any new content, you will get an alert for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, sir, if you need an offering envelope, Brother Derek Williams is there to serve you. Divine health. I got people that are living long time, healthy, wealthy, and wise. Long time.